Hi, this is Allie from the Terra team. In this video, I'm going to introduce the Terra workspace, which is the space where you work on Terra. Whether you're storing and managing your own data or data in the cloud, running an analysis, or sharing your results with colleagues, you'll do it in a workspace. Here's an example workspace pre-populated with toy data and analysis tools. The landing page, or dashboard, has documentation and general information. Documentation can include a study overview, an explanation of the data and analysis tools, or step-by-step -step instructions, whatever you need to keep all collaborators on the same page. Ideally, the dashboard includes enough description for others to be able to reproduce your study. You can edit the documentation, which is in Markdown language, by clicking on the pencil icon at the top of the dashboard. On the far right of the dashboard are useful details about the workspace, like workspace information, the date the workspace was created and last updated, and your workspace permission level, cloud information, like the size and ID and estimated monthly costs of the workspace cloud storage, Google Bucket, a list of all workspace owners, and tags, which can you help find and manage multiple workspaces. Tabs at the top of every page lead to different components. Let's go through those to see how to use everything. The data page has several functions related to storing and managing data. Each workspace comes with its own dedicated storage and you can upload data with the import data button at the top. To see the file directory of the workspace storage, you can click on the Files icon at the bottom left under Other Data. You can upload data and create new folders to organize it right in Terra. You aren't limited to working with data in your workspace storage, however. If you're using data in the cloud, stored by a consortium or uploaded to a Terra workspace or external bucket, the data page includes several aids to help organize and manage the data you need. On the left are three sections for keeping track of different kinds of data. The top section are data tables for storing primary and generated data and metadata of almost any size and variety. They're like spreadsheets you might keep on your local computer. For example, here's a table that includes lab data and demographics for study subjects. Each row corresponds to one subject. Each column is a different kind of data. Here we have the age, height, high-density lipoprotein, etc. This is the kind of structured data you could store in a spreadsheet on a local file system, and in your workspace, it's stored in the Terra platform infrastructure. Tables can also help integrate data sets in external servers into your workspace and into your work. For example, this sample table contains genomic information for the same study participants. Each row is a separate sample, identified by a unique sample ID in the first column and connected to the subject by the subject ID. The second and third columns include links to data files stored in an external repository in the cloud. The workspace table is only storing the URL for the actual file. Your workspace data tables can have as many columns and rows as you need. You can search within tables and across all workspace tables and do basic spreadsheet editing right in Terra. And since input data isn't the only kind of data you might need, there are some other types of built-in tables. For example, reference data stores a number of preloaded reference files, including these human reference files. If you have additional workspace level reference files, like interval files or Docker images or even numbers or strings that you'll use again and again in your analysis regardless of your inputs, 
you can keep them in the other data section under workspace data. Okay, that's data. Your workspace also has dedicated spaces for analysis tools, including interactive analysis apps like Jupyter Notebooks, RStudio, and Galaxy, and bulk analysis workflows like the GATK best practices. To explore and visualize data in real time, go to the Analyses tab. You'll find your notebooks and RStudio files right here, and you can start an analysis by clicking on the files. Or you can launch a Galaxy, Jupyter, or RStudio instance by clicking on the cloud icon in the right sidebar of any page. All the analysis apps run in their own cloud environment, which includes a virtual machine and persistent disk storage. When you click on the gear icon of one of the apps, you can customize the cloud environment with the software and VM you need to run your analysis by clicking the Customize button, and then clicking Create. When you do that, Terra is going to spin up a cloud environment VM to execute the code in your interactive app. The first time, this can take a few minutes. When you open a notebook again, it goes much quicker. When your cloud environment is ready, you'll see the dot by the logo will turn green. You can click on the notebook to open it. You'll get a preview. Clicking on open will allow you to run the code. Notebooks are great for interactive analysis where you can walk through each step as you analyze. As I scroll down, you can see the documentation and the code. To learn more about interactive analyses in Terra, including more about running Galaxy or RStudio, check out the links in the video description. Don't forget to pause or delete your environment when you're done working. The second mode of analysis in Terra is bulk analysis workflows. Workflows are a series of computational steps that you can use in an automated analysis such as aligning reads or calling variants. All GATK best practice workflows are this sort of analysis. You'll manage and set up your bulk analysis tools in the workflows page. If you have a lot of workflows, you could search to find the one you need. I only have one, so I don't need to do that. You can also copy a workflow to another workspace and duplicate or delete the workflow from this workspace by clicking on the three vertical dots in the workflow card. In many cases, you don't have to write your own whittles from scratch. You can access repositories of published workflows with this Find a Workflow option. Tara will suggest some curated workflows or you can search workflows in DocStore or the Broad Methods repository and upload directly to your workspace. To set up and run a workflow, click on the workflow card. You'll find the raw code in workflow description language under script. You can choose the table for inputs in step one and in step two, select data to run. You specify the inputs in the input tab. And where to write outputs in the output tab. Output files are saved to the workspace storage and links to the outputs will be written to the sample table. The output attribute sets up the column in the table where the links to the files will appear. Once you have the workflow set up, click the Run Analysis button 
and then launch to confirm. Terra submits your workflow and takes you to the job history page where you can monitor and troubleshoot workflow submissions. To monitor current jobs, refresh the page. The status of the submission I just launched is submitted. Job history keeps track of all the workflows you've submitted in the workspace. If you have a failed job, like these ones, you can get information to help with troubleshooting by clicking the submission and then following the links. I see a message that my command was stopped before the command finished with a PAPI error code 9. I can look in Terra support to see what that means. That's an overview of the features and functions. And when you're ready to collaborate or share your project, you can share the workspace, which has all the parts a collaborator needs to jump right in. You share by clicking the three vertical dots at the top right. Select Share to bring up a form where you'll add the user ID of the person you want to share with and set their role. Reader, writer, owner, and whether they have can compute power or they can share. You can use these roles to control how much to share and cost. For example, you can let someone view the workspace but not do any analysis with the cost. You can also clone a copy of the workspace using the same three vertical dots. This creates a fresh copy with the same tools and data. One last point. A great way to get a feel for working in a workspace is to start by making a clone of one that's closer to what you might want to do on Terra. The Showcase Library, which you can find from the main navigation menu, includes curated workspaces for a variety of scientific use cases. Here are some GWAS workspaces, some exome analysis workspaces. You get the picture. That's it for the introduction to workspaces in Terra. To learn more about data tables, interactive analysis, workflows, or job history, check the description below for links to Terra support. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy using Terra for your analysis in the cloud.